Hey everybody, Jeremiah here, and today I read A Burglar's Guide to the City. So saddle up, we're going to learn how to rob the city blind. So A Burglar's Guide to the City is striking for a seemingly crime first message, but that's a bit of a Trojan horse. While it does concern burglary and theft, it's more of a meditation on the built environment and how burglars use architecture in strange, innovative, and creative ways. They also bungle things a lot, getting stuck in ceiling tiles and trapped in drywall. As the book describes, Burglars are idiot masters of the built environment, drunk Jedis of architectural space. The book alternates between anecdotes ripped from newspaper headlines, interviews with architects and thinkers of the built space, experts in legal break-in like locksmiths and FBI agents, and straight-up criminals. This makes the book entertaining and the pages fly, as these shifts in perspective reveal different and novel ways to see the city, to see the built environment. And what stories they are. Jeff Manow, the author, is skilled at weaving just the details we need to be entertained while still making a point. So we are introduced to Roof Man, a burglar who only robbed McDonald's over and over again, usually by roof access, leading to his name, because he knew that the design of each McDonald's was exactly the same. He knew that the shift change, lockbox, shutdown times would be the same in every one. Said a McDonald's spokesman about Roof Man, tongue firmly in cheek. He appears to be extremely brand loyal. Then there was a story of a boy who wanted to steal tranquilizers from a vet's office. So he crawled into the vents where, where because it was hot, he stripped off all his clothes and then got himself stuck. Had to be rescued buck naked from the vents, with perhaps some explaining to do on his part. Well, the guy who would use the doggy door to gain access to houses, until one night a cop happened to be parked outside and saw a man slip back outside the doggy door, holding a bag stuffed with electronics. While man stealing jewelry and electronics in Baltimore, tunneling deeper and deeper through drywall and townhouses, going through layers and layers of houses, nestling himself deeper and deeper in suburbia as he went. These stories and more show us the bizarre yet poignant way that burglars deal with architecture. Manos point throughout is that burglars are much more creative than the rest of us. We see architecture the way architects designed it. We use doors, look out windows, stay off the roof. Burglars see a door wherever they want. Use windows to get inside or watch for activity. Drill through or escape into ceilings. Burglars are those drunk masters. Sometimes brilliant, sometimes idiotic, but always creative. His profiles of burglars are worth the price of admission. He talks about George Leonidas Leslie, an architectural grad in the 1860s who went on an unprecedented spree in New York City in the 1860s and 70s. Leslie was an architect who loved steel and had immaculate attention to detail. He worked with a wealthy fence, Frederica Mandelbaum, whose large house included a false chamber and a dummy fireplace. Instead of operating the flue, those controls would lower and raise a dump waiter to hide stolen goods. Mandelbaum also owned a series of warehouses in Brooklyn. Leslie used social connections and his status as an architect to obtain blueprints and plans of banks he tended to rob. He then used these warehouses to build models of safes, vaults, and banks, complete with the furniture and the exact layout. Sometimes even broken at banks without stealing anything to see if anything would go wrong. He also had a flair for the dramatic. He had a man in his crew dressed as a woman to distract police. Once put up a giant black curtain to hide a robbery in progress. He was ultimately murdered by the cross-dressing crew member after their biggest heist in 1878. Honestly, I just wanted to read more about George Leonidas Leslie after reading this. His life seems tailor made for Hollywood. I'd watch that movie. Mano also interviews some retired burglars, Bill Mason and Jack Daxwin. Bill's name is real and Jack's is not, because his employer doesn't know his background in thievery. The similarities are striking in both cases, though. Both of them look to the exterior of buildings, try to figure out how to get in and out, like a puzzle to crack. And even though Bill worked in Florida in the homes of the rich, and Jack worked in Toronto in nondescript apartment buildings, both approached their job as a fun, intellectual puzzle. Jack talks about using the fire code to know which doors have non-working alarms on them, or knowing the density of apartments by fire escape. Bill talks about working his way up through four or five apartments to reach his target sitting at a golf course watching the lights, waiting for the moment when all of them are empty, waiting for the right pattern. These are virtuosos of architecture, pouring over the tiniest detail because it means their way in or out. Man, I was careful not to treat these people as heroes, though. He does seem to have a clear fondness and affection for the burglar, however. He does seem to have a clear fondness and affection for the burglar, however. When he reports that burglary has gone down about 85% in the last 20 years, Manow's tone is as despondent as Jack's voice. I feel like I'm the last of a dying breed, he says. Manow clearly wants to condemn these people. They are breaking the law and taking people's things. But he's also clearly fascinated by them and the endless ways in which they break, change, and remix architecture. A clear architecture fan, Manow seems to see in burglars kindred spirits of a kind, people who allow themselves to create through the medium of built spaces. Manow's fascination slash condemnation is a reflection of her own societal feeling to burglars. There's nothing more wrenching than having your house broken into, the feeling of vulnerability, of violation. Yet we love heist movies, and of all the criminal types, Burglar is one of the few that can be and has been romanticized. Mano's book then perfectly captures our feelings about burglars. Attracted but repulsed. Condemned but fascinated. Thanks for watching.
stay awesome, and keep reading.